I wanted to do an introduction to fly fishing for salmon and Pacific salmon specifically and, and really in Alaska for a while. So I'm going to try to do that with this video. Uh, there's some cool drone footage on this. Uh, we did fish for some trout, some different things too, but I'm really going to concentrate on the salmon. Um, and hopefully it will help people that want to go out and give this a shot. Uh, maybe if there's some trepidation there, go out and do it. it it's, it's an incredible experience. It's definitely not difficult fishing. There are aspects of it that can be difficult, um, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, anyway, I, I kind of, I'll document my trip a little bit uh, like I normally do, but I also want to make it so that people feel like they can go out and do this. So first of all, fly rods uh, for Pacific salmon. Typically you're gonna be in the six to eight weight range and really for flies, egg sucking leeches in a couple different colors and that pretty much covers you um, for salmon. Now right here, there's a whole bunch of what are called pink salmon and silver salmon. Um, I'm hunting silvers in this particular scenario um, and I could actually see three silvers at the back end of this group. So I cast it out just in front there and you saw that one shoot forward. Um, fresh pinks and chum can act pretty similar to that where they will really aggressively go get a fly. Um, but most of the time when you see that, it's going to be a silver salmon. Um, now, there are five species of salmon that we can fish with a fly rod. Um, uh, there's five species of Pacific salmon. Um, and, and I'm not including steelhead, which are different, right? Still had her rainbow trout, but they're ocean run. Um, but so the salmon species are from smallest to largest, um, pink salmon, sockeye salmon, silver salmon, chum salmon, and king or chinook salmon. And, and silvers are also called coho. Uh, pinks are just pinks. Sockeyes are reds or sockeyes. Um, and then chum are either dog or chum are kind of the two names they're known here. So, so this right here, this is a group of pink salmon. Uh, this is in an, a uh, tidal zone, meaning that this part of this creek uh, during high tide is part of the ocean. It's completely flooded by salt water. Uh, these tidal zones can be really good areas to go after fresh salmon. Uh, most of the salmon you'll see in these areas uh, are going to be just fresh. Uh, they're difficult areas to get to typically because usually the roads can't, I mean, they can't be down there because the ocean comes up and down and, and, and the tides change. Um, in Alaska, most of the areas that we fish, the tide changes ballpark, you know, 15 to 20 feet every day. So, I mean, that's how much the ocean moves twice a day from, you know, low tide to high tide. And so the salmon come in with these tidal zones and they get trapped. Um, in those areas. Now, now this right here, this is a giant, massive group of pinks. Um, didn't see any silvers in this group. This is a creek that uh, is only about a mile long from the ocean to the lake. We're actually up near the lake at this point uh, fishing these pinks. Um, when pinks have been in the water for a little while like these, now they haven't been long. Most of these are still pretty fresh. Probably within a week they, they come up to this point. Um, they're still pretty aggressive, but they don't, you can see the difference in the speed. So, so if you're fishing for salmon that have been in the water a little bit longer, uh, you're typically want to slow your presentation down. Um, and, and so I have a lot of video of this kind of stuff. Um, and I, I, we were there and uh, the group I was with for a little over a week. And I mean, we easily, easily caught over a thousand fish. Um, <laughs> Uh, easily we probably caught in in the 2500 to 3000 fish i'm not even joking um to the point that our you know your hands hurt so bad now a lot of times when i'm out here i'm hunting um for specific fish um and and, and it can be more difficult so pinks that's this fish right here pinks are the most abundant salmon species now there there are areas where sockeye are more abundant than pinks but there's more areas with more pinks um, and again they're the smallest um, pinks are not considered great table fare uh, I don't know about that a fresh pink tastes fantastic if you like salmon um, I, yeah I don't know I I think they get a bad rap because they turn fairly quickly when they get into the fresh water and they can become so abundant it becomes very difficult to get the other salmon to hit so they're the they 
Pinks and Chom, which are the second largest, are, are considered not as good. Um, and I've eaten both, and they both taste good. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't think either of them are bad. Um, a lot of people will smoke pinks or chumped. Anyway, that's not what this video is about, but those are pinks. So this pool right here has a handful of chum, um, which are fairly spawned out. And so they are not very aggressive when they get pretty spawned out. Uh, there's mostly pinks and then there's a couple silvers. And I'm actually trying to tease this silver, which you'll actually see here. He came over and looked at it the first time. Then I put it back over him again, and I'm just kind of slowly jigging it above him, and he gets irritated and come, comes over and eats it. Now, salmon don't technically eat when they enter fresh water. That's not actually true. Um, they do eat, um, you know, there's been studies done, and, and, and all of the salmon end up with food in their bellies, and you can cut their stomachs open and see it. You know, they, they, they eat a lot of eggs from the other salmon. Um, they do eat bugs. They, they, I mean, they found mice in salmon's bellies. They, so they do eat, but, but not like they would out in the ocean. Most of it becomes more of a reaction strike, and then they eat it. Um, pinks eat fairly readily, readily um, in fresh water. Um, again, these are mostly pinks, um, but I am also hunting for, for the silvers in these areas. So that right here where that, that fish came in out of nowhere, that was a silver. Again, there's 10,000 pinks out there and 10 silvers. And so that's where people get frustrated with pinks because the silvers are bigger. You can see the incredible acrobatics of these silvers. Um, they are kind of the best of the fly fishing species. Um, and the best sport species of the Pacific salmon. Uh, on this trip, there are no kings. I'll touch on kings a little bit, but I, uh, or Chinook, but um, I want to mostly focus on silvers, um, pinks, and chum, which were what we were seeing on this. And then I'll, then I'll talk about uh, sockeye reds and kings as well. Um, so like I said, silvers are the best overall sport uh, target for uh, the Pacific salmon. Uh, they're the most aggressive. Uh, there are areas where you can actually get into them. Top water usually need a decent amount in, uh, from my experience. We had, there was just very few in while we were there. Um, one of the things that you need, which may seem counterintuitive to those that haven't fished for salmon, is you need rain. Um, so as the tides come in, the salmon come in. But if the water temperature is not right it's, and it needs to be cold, the salmon won't run up the river. Also, there just needs, needs to be enough water that they can do it. So typically, um, the timing for salmon are different in different areas, um, but you need rain basically to get the salmon to come up into the rivers. We didn't have any rain uh, the entire time we were there. There was rain right before we got there, and this is a temperate rainforest, so that's really weird. Um, it, it rained virtually not at all. I think we had one day where it sprinkled. Um, but right before there, we did have quite a bit of rain. And so there was a lot of salmon and that's what you see stuck in these pools that they all came in from that big rainstorm. And we showed up right at the tail end of it. The water dropped and all these salmon were stuck in these pools. The bad thing about that is you really weren't getting any new fish in. Um, you need the rain for them to move up into their spawning grounds. Uh, so these areas that we were fishing, there were a few fish starting to pair off and spawn. But for the most part, they were just all waiting to get further up into these creeks uh, to finish their spawn. Um, again, see that silver come out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, they're just really aggressive. Um, all right, so the flies I mentioned at the very beginning. Um, you know, the three colors that I recommend are going to be pink, purple, and chartreuse. So pinks will obliterate especially fresh pinks they'll fight like a silver they'll hit things really hard if you get them really fresh up, fresh out of the ocean or you can even go down on the ocean these uh, pink flies and that's by far the best for pink salmon so that one's easy to remember pink flies for pink salmon um for silvers pink is still the best color you know if you read up on them at all and from my experience pink is definitely the the best trigger color what what what's funny is sometimes they'll react differently. So, so you'll have a group of, of a handful of silvers in a particular area, um, in a pool. And 
a lot of times you'll run that pink fly through a couple of times and you'll get hit every time through it and you'll pick up a couple of silvers four five six silvers eight ten sometimes when it's crazy um and it's awesome well then a lot of times what you want to do is switch and try the purple and you'll pick up a couple more and the pink's not getting anything again and then throw the chartreuse and you might pick up one or two more now if you threw the purple first you'd probably pick up more than just the two or three that you got on it but you're, you're not going to get as many as you did with the pink um so it's kind of funny sometimes they, they these silvers will key in on a particular color um pinks will eat both purple and pink um, fairly readily they, they're not gonna eat the purple as much as the pink although sometimes on like cloudier days and stuff like that that darker color seems to work a little bit better um, so it's not a bad idea to change and play with it a little bit but typically if you're fishing for pinks use something pink for silvers pink's still the best but purple's pretty good and chartreuse is also pretty good I don't think it's any worse than purple um, they're both pretty good they're not they're not as good as pink now this is kind of a tip um, if you read up on people trying to fish for silvers in various areas, and it was definitely the area we were at when this was a big issue, is it's very difficult for people to get past the pinks and get to the silvers. I would be willing to bet, well, I didn't talk to very many people in the area we were at that did very well on silvers. Um, uh, and I can't say that we crushed the silvers or did extremely well, but we caught a lot of silvers. So how did we catch silvers uh, through all the pinks and why were other people struggling to catch them? Well, number one is most people don't change their tactics, right? Um, a lot of people are throwing out spinners. They just cast them out and reel them in. They, they're fishing the same speed um, and they're, they're getting into pinks or, um, you know, they're stripping slowly or just swinging a fly for pinks and hoping to get silvers. And all of that will work. Occasionally, you're going to get a silver that will will hit it but if you have thousands of pinks like we had in this situation and that's all you do is throw out and, and and you're kind of a slow speed or you're swinging flies you're gonna have to get pretty lucky to get a silver you can do it and a lot of people say well i just try to catch all the pinks and get them out of the way and then eventually i get to some silvers and, and yeah that that can work but it's usually pretty slow pretty frustrating and some people say well that sounds awesome i'm just gonna go out and catch a bunch of pinks and yeah honestly if that's your game then i don't fault you for it it's fun um, but i was hunting silvers right i wanted to catch silvers and i caught a lot of silver so how did i take this situation where um most people are really struggling and and how is i successful how is my group successful okay so there's there's two things that you really look at doing um especially if you have a little bit of a gap which you typically do when the the fish come in the river the, you know the pinks come earlier and then the silvers come after so the silvers are going to be more aggressive okay so that means is I can strip my fly much faster um, to get it away from the silvers or from the pinks and target the silvers. So speed is important. If you're targeting just silvers, you want to strip fast. Um, you know, I'm not talking like put it under your armpit and overhand strip, right? It, it doesn't need to be that fast, but it needs to be a brisk pace. You know, stripping like you're stripping fast on a river for trout, you know, across the current, right? It, it needs to be fast. Now that can wear you out fairly quickly. So uh, you may not want to do that all day and I don't blame you for it, but it is a good technique to go, you know, hit a pool and strip really fast over it with pink. Several times work the whole pool with that pink fly. There's a pretty good chance you're going to be able to pick up some of those pink, some of those silvers that are more aggressive if they're in that pool by going fast not always um so that's when you go to the second technique okay so the second technique is color okay chartreuse is key for that when you get into the silvers in this environment pinks for whatever reason are not that attracted to the chartreuse you're gonna pick up some um you're gonna get some follows but it's not nearly like it is with pink or purple so by using that chartreuse you can actually keep your fly in those pools with thousands of pinks and eventually tempt some of those silvers that are down at the bottom and that's usually where they are. What's funny is they're, they're usually on the bottom and the edges and the back. Okay, that's, that's kind of where the silvers tend to congregate in these big pools. They, they don't seem to like to be in the big mass of fish. So they will be at the very bottom, which makes them hard to see. They will be on the edges, um, 
they spook fairly easy, uh, easier than the paints and stuff tend to. So a lot of times, if you're working an edge of a pool, you know, any on your edge will probably spook off to the bottom or to the far side or to the back or somewhere else. They do recover fairly quickly. So even if you spook one, a lot of times you can get them to eat if they're aggressive. Um, but but anyway, they, they like to be on the edges and they like to be on the bottom or the back. Okay, so um, I use my pink and I cover those areas and I go fast and then I switch to my chartreuse and I'm gonna try to move it slowly. Um, you know, I'm, I'm slow jigging it, you know, little twitches and then just bringing the line in. I use my rod tip a lot when I'm fishing for salmon, more than just a strip strip. I'll, I'll give it a little jig. What I want is I just wanna give it that kind of a jigging motion just above where the fish are, are sitting in the whatever water you're in. Now, I'll be honest, some of the water that we fished had so many that if I did that, I was just gonna snag them. So that's the other thing you gotta keep in mind. You gotta keep your fly above where all the fish are. Um, being able to see is really critical when you're trying to do this and you got them in there really tight because I, I, you can see in some of the videos here where I let the fish eat and I don't set the hook and because I know it's a pink and again, I'm hunting silvers. So I'll let the pinks eat it and I won't set the hook. They'll shake their head until they spit the fly out. Um, and then I'll wait for a silver to hit before I set the hook. Now, it cost me a couple silvers because you have to make that decision like fast. They're gonna eat it and they're gonna spit it out too, just like the pinks do. Usually though, if they hit like a truck, if it's out of nowhere, it's a silver. Um, not always, like I said, sometimes pinks will hit just like a silver. They'll come out of nowhere and just absolutely annihilate it. Um, but usually you can tell because of they're also bigger and it'll be a big fish, but a big male pink can be, you know, up to about 10 pounds, which, which, you know, the sheer silvers, most of them are going to be in that seven, eight pound range. You'll occasionally catch some big ones and, and it depends again on where you're at, but, but, but by and large, your pinks are going to be the three to five range. Your silvers are going to be six, seven, eight pounds with some big ones getting up into the teens. Uh, the biggest I've ever seen personally was 17 and a half pounds. That's a huge silver. They get bigger. You don't see them that big very often, um, but they are bigger and, and, and realistically almost twice as big as the pink. So a lot of times it's, it's pretty obvious um, when you get silver and then you set a hook. So that, that's kind of how I target them and how I'm able to get silvers from out of pinks. Okay, so now let me transition and talk about chums. Um, I don't have any video of catching chum on this trip. Uh, chum or dog salmon, they come in earlier. So, so again, kind of caught talking timing. Um, usually in June, you start seeing a few, late June or into July, you start seeing chums, and then you also start seeing sockeye. Um, and kings coming in to the river systems, depending on which river system you're in. We really weren't supposed to have any kings. I saw a couple of them on the rivers we were fishing. Um, it's all closed to king fishing. There, there weren't very many of them. By the time we were there, they were completely spawned out. Um, you know, not fish that you want to target. Um, and, and the same thing for the chums. We caught a couple, but just because they're aggressive, it's really not the time of year for chums. Chums are earlier. Now, chums are bigger than, um, and kinks are bigger than your pinks and your silvers. They're the two biggest of the salmon species. In my opinion, for a, from a sport fish standpoint, chums are a lot more fun than kinks. <laughs> kings, kings are hard. Um, a lot of people just snag them. I, I anti-snag. I don't, I don't like fishing for a fish species that I have to, 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 to snag. I don't like flossing for fish. You'll see, see people all the time saying, well, you just have to floss them when you're fishing for salmon. Um, so that's really only true for one species, and that is red or sockeye salmon. Uh, if you go fish like the Kenai River, or you go to uh, the Brooks Range, and you're fishing like Iliam and the Knack Knack, uh, various rivers in that area, they have massive uh, sockeye or red salmon runs. Yeah, those fish, they taste great. They're probably the best tasting of all the salmon species. Um, and in, in certain areas, it's pretty fantastic um, snagging, <laughs> right? That's what the Kenai is famous for. People go up there and they snag sockeye salmon. They call it flossing or lining. And essentially what they're doing is they're swinging a fly. They have a weight and then they have a fly 
or and then they do this with both uh, spin cast and fly rods and there's maybe an 18 inch gap between it and you basically swing that down through and there's so many fish coming through that you're gonna catch their mouth with your line and snag them um, and I'm not saying don't go try it because it's a fun thing to do once but if you like sport fishing, sockeye is not fun. Um, kings are different. Kings tend to stay out in the, the middle of the rivers, um, deeper water. You will occasionally get them up into the creeks, but the vast majority of them are going to be in big water. Uh, they actually spawn out in the big water. Um, and so a lot of times it's back trolling. Uh, it's not really fly fishing that most people do for them. You, I'm not saying you can't. I've caught kings on my fly rod. Um, it's really cool to catch one. Um, I've never seen it be really fast action. Um, it's worth doing, but definitely don't expect to catch a lot if you're going and doing this on a fly rod. Um, I don't care how much you pay uh, for the nicest lodge in the most remote place with supposedly having great king fishing, you're going to struggle to catch many kinks. Um, that's okay, right, if that's what you're after, but just keep that in mind that, that king salmon fishing is not a numbers game. Um, but they are cool and they're big. You know, most of them are going to be 20 pounds, you know, 18 to 25 pounds, um, but they can get huge. Um, I've, I think the biggest I've caught is a 40 pounder. They get even bigger than that. Um, now Kings don't fight like some of the other salmon. They tend to be, it's more of a strong, slow fight where you've seen in some of these videos, how the, uh, the silvers and the pinks will explode and tail dance. They don't do that. Chum will actually do that as well. So, so on my list of favorite salmon, just to wrap this all up, put kind of a bow on my rambling. Right, silvers to me are number one. Chums to me are number two. Pinks are number three. Believe it or not, um, I, well, I like kings fourth and sockeye fifth. Just from a fly fishing standpoint, from, from what I hope to experience, um, having said that, I've caught them all. I love them all. I wouldn't turn down a trip for any of them. Uh, even sockeye, which you have to go line, it's something that's just kind of cool to experience. Um, anyway, there's my introduction to fly fishing and fishing for Pacific salmon. Uh, it's not a hard thing to do. Uh, if the fish are in the water, um, you know, if you have the right species, they're pretty aggressive, throw the right color, you're gonna get catch a lot of fish. Uh, you can do a lot of this DIY. The big thing is finding areas where you have access to rivers. There's a lot of great lodges out there. Uh, if you have questions or, or you wanna plan a trip, message me and I, I can try to help you uh, find some locations to go. Alaska's massive. There's literally thousands and thousands of creeks that you can go to and fish. Uh, there's also a lot of places in, in British Columbia um, and even down into Washington. Um, I like the more remote areas, so typically BC or Alaska is where I like to go to chase them. Um, anyway, cool footage. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Obviously not my norm. Uh, I do love uh, getting up there. I go up every year. Um, anyway, that's my rambling. Appreciate you guys watching, and we'll get back to carp now that uh, I've got my... Uh, <laughs> I've got my... Uh, my Alaska trip for the year out of the way. So appreciate you watching.